If you love beef oxtails, but you also eat pork, you're gonna wanna watch me make this stewed pork neck bones and potatoes in my slow cooker. The taste will knock your socks off, and you may ask yourself if this is really oxtails that we bought for a fraction of the cost. So, let's get to cooking. This recipe contains a few basic ingredients that aren't expensive, like russet potatoes, onions, and garlic. I have two packs of neck bones, each pack, pork neck bones, each pack is about three and a half pounds. And when you look at this price tag, look, it's $2.44 per pound, much cheaper than oxtails. So I opened up both packs and I'm washing them in water. So I'm going to soak them in water and white vinegar to just get some of the gunk off. It's very similar to cleaning regular pork chops. Sometimes they have gritty bits on them that we just want to soak and get off. So while that's going to soak for a good 30 minutes or so, we can take a look at our seasoning options. So I do have this brown gravy pack. It's 30% less sodium that you can put in there. There are four servings and the sodium is 230 milligrams. So that's 10% per serving for the entire day. So that's not bad for the sodium. You can also use seasoned salt, black pepper, smoked paprika, poultry seasoning, and this is vegan. It contains thyme, sage, marjoram, rosemary, black pepper, and nutmeg. And I like to use it even in beef because it has such a good flavor. Onion powder, garlic powder, and of course, our fresh vegetables. If you don't have fresh garlic, then you can use the minced garlic or just the garlic powder. That will be fine as well. So now that I have my seasonings out and my neck bones have been soaking. I'm just adding a little bit more water to them. I also soaked my potatoes in water and vinegar as well in a separate bowl. I'm taking the time to rinse off each neck bone individually just to make sure there are no gritty bits or extra fatty pieces that I want to get off and not have someone chew on in our final dish. These are fresh neck bones, so these have not been smoked. Smoked meat contains a lot of sodium, which is different than these fresh neck bones. So this is a fresh cut of meat, just like you would get with the fresh pork chop or rib of the pig. Now, if I see a piece that I don't like on the neck bone, then I will pull it off and discard. And you want to keep watching to see how dirty this water looks by the time we finish cleaning our seven pounds of pork neck bones. So inspect each one carefully and pull off the fatty bits that aren't needed. Of course, some fat does provide good flavor, but if it's an extra hanging piece, then I definitely pull that off. You can see that these neck bones are very meaty. Pork neck bones contain a lot more meat on them in ratio to its bone as compared to beef neck bones. I do like beef neck bones. They are cheap. Oh, look at that big piece of fat. Fat, skin, whatever, it's coming off. Uh, beef neck bones are also cheap compared to oxtails, but it's very little meat compared to bone. And so these pork neck bones have a lot of meat and the way we're going to cook them down, they're going to actually taste like beef. Now, look at the water in my sink, y'all. And this is my clean meat in a colander. I am going to give it an extra rinse. You know, cleanliness is the most important thing when you're cooking and it's super important when you're cooking meat, especially pork. Now that our meat is clean, let's go ahead and give it a season. So I have my seasonings out that I'm going to use. Salt and black pepper are the two ingredients that I use in a reserved manner, just because I intentionally am trying to eat less salt for health and my family doesn't like a lot of black pepper. So I am measuring this out with a teaspoon measuring spoon. All the other seasonings I just add freely. So with this, I have half of my neck bones in the bowl so that I can season up and make sure each neck bone has adequate seasoning. So then after I season this first half, then I'll put in the second half and season that. This half is going to get one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of seasoned salt, and now with the smoked paprika, you can see that I'm adding it freely. When I season my meat, I like for all of my meat to be covered with the seasoning. It adds a good flavor. And remember that we're also cooking vegetables with this meat. So this seasoning that I'm adding is going to season the meat, but it's also going to season the vegetables and it's going to season the broth that we're cooking it in. So it's not excessive. If you try this recipe one time and you like seasoning, I guarantee you're going to like the seasonings in this particular dish. So I am just massaging the seasoning into both sides of the meat. You'll notice that I haven't added any liquid. So this is a dry rub, essentially. 
You can do this step the night before in order to help the seasonings penetrate your meat. I've done that before, but if you don't have time, then you can just season it right before you're cooking like I am today, and it will still turn out absolutely delicious. Look at how that seasoning looks on that meat. So now I've added my second half of neck bones to my bowl to give it a season. I'm using the same seasonings that I showed you earlier in this video. With the teaspoon of salt and pepper, that is enough for the cooking process in my opinion. And then at the end when the food is finished, then you can taste it again and add more salt or pepper if you feel like that's what you want. But once you get used to cooking and eating with less salt, it really doesn't become that noticeable in your taste buds, but you may notice a good benefit in your health. Now that our meat is all seasoned and sitting to the side, we can go ahead and get started with our potatoes. I am using about seven potatoes. You wanna use the amount of food that can fit into your slow cooker. I have my Titan peeler. This is the best vegetable peeler in the world, vegetable and fruit peeler. I have a link to it in the description box. You can order it from Amazon. You can also buy it from Bed Bath & Beyond. I think it was an as seen on TV gadget too that some people used to order from infomercials, but I absolutely love it. So now that I have my potatoes peeled, I'm just going to cut them in about I cut them in half and then each half I cut into about six big chunks. This is going to cook in the slow cooker. So as it cooks for hours and hours, the potato will break down and thicken our broth. But I want some pieces to be big enough so that I still have chunks of potato to eat with my neck bone. So you can cut your potatoes to the size you want. But for this dish, I like a big chunk of potato. So that's why I'm cutting it this way. Next up, I'm cutting two onions. I find that I'm using onions and garlic in almost everything I cook in the wintertime. They just add such a great flavor that I'm used to and they have health benefits and they add a lot of flavor to recipes. So if you don't make a habit of buying a bag of onions and a head of garlic every week, you might want to consider that and just see how that can jazz up the recipes that you do cook, whatever they may be. So I'm just giving my onions a chop, a big dice I would call it. Next up, we're moving on to our garlic. I have a head of garlic, so I'm breaking off several cloves, eight, 10. Add the garlic to your heart's content. If you have the minced garlic in a jar, then you can add two, three, four tablespoons. It just depends on how much garlic you like. Remember, we're cooking seven pounds of meat plus six or seven big potatoes. So the amount of food that we are cooking can really stand up to the amount of potatoes. I mean, can stand up to the amount of garlic and onion that we're adding. I do cut the ends off of the garlic. I don't like to bite that little root part of the garlic. So I do cut that off before I chop up my garlic, just a personal habit, but it's probably not required. I am adding some chicken broth. This is 33% less sodium. I happen to have this left over from the day before of another recipe I made. So to it, I'm going to add some additional broth. I'm going to add mushroom stock. This is my first time buying this this season and I really like it. You'll notice it's a darker color than chicken stock, but I like mushroom stock better than the vegetable stock. I have my slow cooker set to cook on high for six hours. So I'm putting in most of my stock and then I'm going to add meat and I don't want to put too much liquid in. So I'm just going to save some to the side just to verify that I'll need it. So I have my meat, potatoes, onion, and garlic in my bowl. So I'm just adding my aromatics to the stock pot first, some garlic and onion, and now I'm layering in my meat and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that all of this meat and potatoes will fit into my crock pot. I was able to get all seven pounds of meat and the potatoes in the crock pot, but it is overflowing just a little bit, but it will cook down some. So instead of putting the plastic lid on top and it won't seal completely, I'm going to put aluminum foil. Now be careful if your bowl is hot like mine from preheating that you use oven mittens to not burn yourself. But after it cooks down for a while, I did rearrange some of the meat and potatoes and I was able to put my lid back on. Now some of the pieces up top are dark because they're not under the broth, but they are completely tender and just move them around to get them under the broth and it will look absolutely divine. This meat is so tender, so flavorful. I actually didn't even use the gravy packet. I just didn't see a need for it. If you want your 
broth to be thicker, then certainly you can add a couple of packs of the low sodium gravy packet, but it's not even needed. And the flavor of the meat and potatoes and onions was so delicious. I added parsley on top for a pop of color. You could also put some chopped green onions if you like, that would be awesome. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had pork neck bones. If not, please try my recipe. Thank you.